space is part of the orange mean. What can you tell us about this piece? This is the oldest piece in this show, it's from 2000. And my approach to my work, pretty much my entire career, has been to work spontaneously in the studio in, a, in order to allow thoughts from my subconscious to surface. I've always liked working on a large scale. Uh, scale's been important to me because of the physical presence that it communicates. The interlocking forms started out as a skeletal reference and in it's very specific in the piece that's gray ribs that's over behind me. Um, I like using a variety of different colors. Red is a real powerful color, so the red sentinel is to serve as a type of guardian. Then I also enjoy the use of the metallics and making the clay look like a material other than ceramic. So when I use the bronze glazes or the gold glazes or the palladium, it references a different material. People don't necessarily know that it's ceramic. It's only been in the five years since I've returned to Houston that I've started working with bronze. And with some of the bronzes, I use coloration that make it not obvious that the work is bronze. So I'll incorporate colors of patinas that are more like glazes in the bronzes and metallic glazes that are more like what you expect a bronze to be. The, the uh, reoc other reoccurring theme that's showing up in my work over the past 17 years has been the realistic eyeball, which I started incorporating in my work after the birth of my son. And that was due to him watching me in the studio and me becoming aware of my parental responsibility. Gray ribs is one of the pieces that I think is a more masculine form. I, when I was finished with it, one of the things that I was most pleased about was the simplicity of the form, the focus on the rib cage, which I think in this piece, I was really thinking of the human element of the rib cage. But once, once we had this piece, this form cast in bronze and used a green patina, then people Referred, referenced it to a, a cactus, and uh, and I have used leaf references in other works, like one of the pieces in Brackridge Park. I specifically referenced a live oak leaf, which also has a spine and ribs that come out that radiate out from it. I like the use of paradox to make a strong form out of a vulnerable material and then go back from that vulnerable material to a strong material. So it was really fun for me to make this piece first out of clay, which is, is vulnerable in that it can break, but it survives for years and years and years. And then to have it go to bronze, which is not easy to break, but probably won't last as long as clay. <laughs> the title of this piece is not pot because it is not a pot even though it's shaped like a pot and it's made out of clay which is typically used for vessels uh, I've never really been a potter I learned how to work on the wheel so that I could teach my students how to work on the wheel but my interest in clay has always been sculptural so for this specific piece even though it's shaped like a vessel, the opening is closed, so it cannot be a vessel. What I wanted the audience to focus on in this piece is the structure of the cutting, which is why each cut is outlined in red to draw more attention to the structure of the form. A lot of my work is about reference, referencing, referencing people, places, events, this piece, The Little Hurricane, is specifically referencing Hurricane Harvey. Um, it also employs the use of paradox because it's a little tiny object that's referencing a big scary event and we were pretty terrified during Harvey. And my way of dealing with that terror was to make it into an intimate little object that was more animated and playful and not so scary. 
I have not been able to do that kind of reference with the coronavirus, and I don't think I will be able to. It's too, it's too overwhelming. A hurricane goes away. We don't know what's going to happen with the coronavirus.